What's up guys? TGIF. Thank God it's Friday and so you know what that means. It is time for What The Fitness. Today we're doing a live react What The Fitness. So I have not seen this. Chino has not tipped me off. Chino, what do we got? All right, so this is a submission that comes to us from CM uh, Koyosho. I apologize if that is not how it's pronounced, but- Better than you than me, my friend. Yeah, right. Um, he sent us a video. It's a timestamp video of Jimmy Moore. Oh, okay. He's, he's a 400 pound keto expert with eight books and half a dozen podcasts talking about an article by Dr. Kristen Bayer. MD okay. on metabolic health and this pandemic. Oh boy. Um, so his response is between 1806 and 1955 on that video. So I've placed it at 1753 to kind of lead in a little bit. Let's see what you've got to say. Just gonna prepare myself for triggering. Because look at the people who have uh, been most susceptible to it outside of older people. 75 and older, that's one category. The next category are people with comorbidities upwards of an average of three comorbidities. And these comorbidities are things like elevated fasting blood glucose, lower, trig uh, lower uh, HDL, higher triglycerides, higher blood pressure, obesity, all of the- How convenient that he left out higher LDL, which is also associated with worse outcomes, but low carb salads don't want to talk about that. Those things become these comorbidities, which once this virus hits your body, make you more susceptible. 9-1 Divock has brought renewed interest and urgency into successful treatment and prevention of metabolic syndrome. 9-1 Divock statistics obtained from the CDC clearly show higher morbidity and mortality associated with metabolic disease, specifically diabetes and obesity. I remember when I used to attend a lot of these obesity conferences uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I would hear presentations from people like Dr. Jeff Folick and Dr. Steve Finney, that guy back there on the wall. Um, He's literally got a framed photo of and Dr. Finney. And many other, Dr. Eric Westman, many others. Oh, God. And I remember Dr. Volick specifically, along with Dr. Richard Feynman, did a study where they looked at all the traits of metabolic syndrome which is all these things that I just mentioned and more. And then they matched up what diet fixes the things in metabolic syndrome. And it literally, all of the things that got better in uh, with a low carb ketogenic diet were exactly the things in metabolic syndrome. So they said the answer to metab metabolic syndrome and metabolic health is to put people on a lower carb type of diet. So this is the, the same the same kind of straw man argument that gets thrown around. So he butchered the shit out of that study. Uh, but let, let's first take his points that people who are more metabolically unhealthy um, and have more comorbidities are at greater risk for complications from COVID-19. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. All the diet tribes are making this about metabolic health. So plant-based has done this. Carnivore has done this, low carb has done this. It's just a straw man argument to try to scare people into using their dietary approach or dietary supplement or whatever it is they're selling. There's, you know, they're saying this, this, Paul Saladino always does this dumb shit. This disease isn't about COVID, it's about metabolic health. Or, or they say things like, you know, they're trying to distract us from the real issue. Well, who the fuck is they? Hmm? Is that the Illuminati? Do I get my Illuminati check? Chino, did we get the Illuminati check this week? Uh, no, no, that's Ah, oh, fuck. All right, well, we'll have to contact the Illuminati and the lizard people and make sure they're giving us our check. Yeah, like, like this idea that there's this dark, sinister force that doesn't want us to talk about metabolic health. Dude, nobody is saying that metabolic health doesn't fucking matter. Of course it matters. It matters for most diseases. So if you get septic, if you get, uh, if you have a heart attack, if you have any kind of infection, the outcomes are typically worse for people who are in worse overall health and have more comorbidities. 
This ain't no new shit. People are like, the government doesn't want to talk about it. The government has been putting out recommendations for years for people to lower their calorie intake and increase their exercise, and people don't fucking do it. All right? I'm not a big fan of the government. I think they can fuck up a wet dream. But trying to blame the government for this shit is just fucking stupid. All right? And it's appealing to the lowest fucking intellectual common denominator. So I, I want to be clear. If you get more metabolically healthy, on average, your chances of having a complication from COVID-19 go down significantly. So yes, we should all be aiming to strive for improving our metabolic health. That doesn't mean the disease is not still a threat. There is evidence that even in young healthy people, it causes uh, scar tissue to develop on your lungs. Or uh, they've even seen some um, cardiometabolic stuff uh, in young athletes. I think there was a study at Ohio State University seeing, um, I believe they saw some kind of changes to the cardiac tissue. Again, like just being in better overall health, does it provide you more protection? Yes. But that message needs to be framed with, hey, it's not a cure. You still have to be careful. We should still take other measures to try to make sure that we don't get sick or minimize our risk of getting sick because it's not a cure. It doesn't guarantee that you're not going to get really sick. Okay. This is all about risk. There's that aspect of it. And then he goes into, well, you know, the low carb diet is what fixed these markers of metabolic health. Uh, again, I like to go back to a meta-analysis by NAUD where they looked at uh, low carb versus low fat and everything in between and examined, okay, what has the best outcomes for metabolic health markers? And basically what they showed was that you could explain 95 to 99% of the improvement in health markers based on weight loss in these studies. So if a ketogenic diet makes it easier for you to adhere to a calorie deficit, then absolutely do that. But for many of us, a ketogenic diet is not something that's sustainable and it only leads to short-term weight loss and people regain the weight. Now, that's not unique to the ketogenic diet. That's pretty much every diet out there, okay? So there's been two meta-analyses done on dietary adherence over the long term. We're talking about two years. And what they find is that all diets are pretty much equally terrible. But when people can self-select, meaning they select the diet they would like to be in, adherence tends to go up. So what that means is, guys, compliance is the science. Select a dietary approach that feels the easiest for you while still allowing yourself to get into a calorie deficit. But again, trying to say that, okay, this, you know, if you're metabolically healthy, you don't have to worry about social distancing or, or you can, you know, just do whatever. You don't have to worry about vaccinating yourself, et cetera, et cetera. That's all fucking bullshit. Yes, it lowers your risk. It is not a cure. It doesn't mean that the disease can't still harm you. And let's be real, for people who are already very overweight or who have comorbidities, they're not gonna get metabolically healthier tomorrow or a week from now or two weeks from now, that sort of thing. It's gonna take months, which they should be striving to achieve, absolutely. But that takes time. So what are they supposed to do in the meantime? And that's why we have these other protocols in place, put out by experts to try and prevent people who are at risk from getting sick and possibly dying. So I'm sure the comments on this one are gonna be super fun. Um, so make sure you get in there, tell me about how I'm paid by the Illuminati and that the vaccine is just a way for Bill Gates to track us and send rats embedded with 5G straight into our fucking brains. Get in there, let me know. All right, guys, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.